Hi guys. Um, so I've tried to record this million, uh, this video a million times over. Um, it's complicated to go back in time and revisit things when you clearly have not dealt with them. But I am in therapy which I never thought I would say. Um, and I'm working on the things and I feel like now is as good a time as any to uh, address or give you guys a little story time um, about, sorry, I was closing apps on my computer. Uh, about the pebble and I. So, in 2000, I want to say 16, uh, it's been a minute, he approached me saying that he is ready to get married and that he wants to make sure I'm ready, so he wants an open relationship. And I was not okay with it. Uh, I fought him at every turn when I should have just left. But when you've been with somebody that long and they're as good at wording things, uh, not even that, they know you well enough to, ha to know how to pull the right strings with you. Uh, sometimes you do stupid things because you care about them. And I did. So I, after being hounded about it for months, said, okay, let's do this. But if we do this, there's going to be round rules. So the rules were basically no sleeping with my friends, no sleeping with your friends, and vice versa. Uh, you have to meet them not on campus because at the time he was working on campus um, and you can't meet them through your training because I don't want these to be people that you see every day. You can meet them through like Tinder or Bumble or whatever, but you're not going to know them personally and see them regularly. It's one night stands only, which he agreed. I thought, okay, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. He's going to do what he's going to do. And we agreed that while we could talk about how we felt about things, we were not going to talk about our um, adventures, for lack of a better term. So... It was clear to me that I was not getting the attention that I wanted from him at this point in time. And if I wasn't getting it from him, then he was clearly giving it to other people. And while, yes, I realize that's kind of the rules of engagement in those situations or whatever, I wasn't handling it well because, honestly, I didn't want to do it. And I had made it clear a few times throughout um, that I did not want to do this anymore and that I am not comfortable with it. And if we are going to work out, then this needs to stop because I'm no longer comfortable and I don't like this. And I was met with, well, you didn't give me enough time. Just give me a little more time, which at first I should have noticed was kind of manipulative because the whole thing was brought to me as I know I'm ready, but I want you to do this to get it out of your system and make sure you're ready. And so the fact that I was ready for it to be over with and was being told, well, you need to give me more time. You need to give me more time. I, I'm not ready for this now. Kind of made me uncomfortable and so I decided, okay, screw it. Um, 
essentially in the back of my mind, I was like, there's no way that th- this can be saved. So I started doing what he was doing. Um, Honestly, every time I felt guilty because I have always been a monogamous person. I don't have an issue with people who have different lifestyles romantically than I do. And I'm very supportive of them. But for me personally, I can't do it. And so if I do have a partner, I want them to be monogamous and not taking their business elsewhere or, you know, going other places with their feelings and stuff like that. And I'm very clear about that now. Um, And I feel like I was clear about it then, but there's certain things that were said to me later on that make me question how clear I was. Um, Anyway, so let's backtrack a little because I want to get this all out there. I'm tired of, I guess, the stigma of being that bitch that left because a lot of our mutual friends, even though we're still friendly, um, are not as close with me as they used to be. And I feel like kind of part of it is this whole issue with Pebble. So let's go back to the very beginning. We had agreed that this would start during our summer break, which I believe started in like the third week of May or something like that. Um, Second or third week of May. I had agreed to this and we had set up the rules and we had set up the date and we had everything planned out so that I have a little bit of comfort and peace of mind because personally, I like plans. I like things to be of a certain certain organization level. Well, then my friend, which uh, I reference, actually, she became my roommate at one point, Kitty, sends me screenshots of the Pebbles profile. And I think it's like two months before our summer break. And he has a profile on Tinder. Not only does he have a profile on Tinder, but... And let me stop right here for a second. I don't know a lot about Tinder. When I was using dating apps, I used Bumble. So I may not use the right terms and stuff, but I think it's called like an ultra like or super like. I don't know. It's more than swiping one direction. So he had done that to Kitty, who he knew was one of my very close friends and that we had been friends for years at this point. Like probably going on six or seven years now. And so the fact that he had done that to one of my close friends, he had set it up way before we had agreed on a date, set me off and I was angry and I tried to put a stop to it. And then there I said, I'm not ready for this. You need to stop. I can't do this because it's just going to hurt me. And I don't want this. He essentially had a silver tongue and talked me into it. And let me preface all of the rest of this by saying, clearly, I'm a dumb bitch because I went with it and I allowed it and I put up with it. With that being said, I know that I did not have to allow it. But the thing about manipulation is people make it seem like you have to or make you feel like you're doing something wrong if you don't go along with what they want to do. And that's the situation I was in. I was being told things like, I don't think I can be with you if you're not willing to do this for me for just a month. If, and that was the original time frame was he was going to do this for a month and we were going to call it good. A month turned into three months, turned into five months, turned into eight months. By month eight, I was sick of it. Well, let's see. So... Yeah, 
So eight months because I had agreed to let him start early in March because he said he needed that time to find people that he could hook up with over the summer break. So eight months of essentially torture. Um, I think I hooked up with four people, technically five, because there was a very uncomfortable drunken encounter with a friend of mine um, that was not invited to be a part of things, but joined anyway. Uh, so that's, that's that. Anyway, every time I just felt increasingly more guilty. The last time it had happened was June or July. And I said, enough's enough. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to let him do his thing and get it out of his system. And then everything's going to be good. Again, I reiterate, I'm a dumb bitch. I cannot believe in hindsight that I did this and I allowed this to happen. But I did. So October rolls around and I say, I can't do this. I can't. I need to move out because who's to say that you're not bringing them back to our house, which was also something we agreed that we weren't going to do. Um, I said, who's to say that you're not talking to them the whole time you're hanging out with me? Because during this span, he did not put his phone down and it made me super like uncomfortable that he couldn't hold a conversation with me without um, having his phone in front of his face. So he said, oh, yeah, 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 we're, we're not, we're done. It's fine. If, if it's really that serious, it's done. Well, and I'm not proud of this, you guys. Let me preface this by saying, I know I'm not innocent. I know I was the asshole in some of these circumstances. <sighs> he left his computer open with his email open. And I walked by and saw Craigslist. And so I snooped. And it had been two or three weeks since we had called it off and said we weren't going to do this anymore. And he was still hitting up people on Craigslist to hook up with. And that hurt a lot. I went down a really rough rabbit hole of why am I not good enough? Why am I not enough for this person that I've done everything for? For I think it was like four or five years at that point. I mean, I cooked this guy dinner every night. I cleaned after him. I took care of him when he was sick. I like did everything I could and I mean, I was spending every dime I had on the only bills I had, which was my car, my phone, and then everything else went into groceries for him and cleaning supplies and stuff like that. Like, I poured my heart out and just got shat on. So I said that enough was enough. And I moved back in with my parents. And we were still talking because I just, I guess part of me didn't want to believe that things were done. And that it really had all gone down like that because I never thought I would be the person that would let somebody take advantage in that way. And he was trying to convince me that we should get back together. And I said, you know what? Show up to my house for Thanksgiving. Because I hadn't told my parents at this point. Nobody really knew what was going on. They just knew that I wanted to move out and I needed some space. Um, so I told him, show up to Thanksgiving. My family doesn't know anything. If, you know, you can hang out with us and have a good time, then sure, let's do this. Thanksgiving rolls around. No pebble to be found. Uh, but he can call me and tell me that I need to come to his house because he doesn't want to leave his house. He's hanging out with his family and his family is important and mine is not. So that sucked. And for some reason, again, dumb bitch sometimes, uh, I said, all right, I'll give you one last chance. 
come to my birthday. I threw a freaking awesome party for my 25th birthday. Okay, so it was a while ago because I'm about to turn 27 this year in November. But anyway, threw an awesome party. Had so many friends there. It was such a great night. I think even my brother came from out of state, if I remember right. Like, yeah, he did. My mom surprised me and I cried. And somewhere on Facebook, there's a video. So if I can figure out how to snag it and attach it, I'll attach it. Anyway, so everybody showed up. Everybody I had invited, except for Pebble. And that's when I decided I was done. And so I picked up the last of my things towards the end of December. And that was it. I was single. Uh, so yeah, we, we tried really hard to remain friends and it's so hard when you've known somebody for that long and you've known them so intimately to draw certain boundaries that are quite different to what they were previously. Um, in that, I mean, he always wanted me to come over and hook up and spend the night and cuddle with him and cook for him, basically do girlfriend shit. And I was not his girlfriend anymore and wanted me to be buying shit for him. And again, I was not his girlfriend anymore. So I had to put a quick stop to that. Um, and so that was that. I started going on Bumble and talking to people, and I met a lot of cool people. I met a lot of creepy people. I can probably tell you some really fun Bumble stories later. But I ultimately ended up meeting my now boyfriend off Bumble probably about six months later. A little before six months later. But, uh, yeah. And clearly that has worked out very well because as I said in my previous video, we live together now and we're very happy and it's been almost a year now and it's going good. And I have no regrets, honestly. Even with all the stuff I put up with, it only has shown me, you know, that I need to trust my gut with people and I need to never question why I'm not good enough for someone again, because clearly that was stupid. And uh, yeah, it was a hell of a ride. And I, even with all the craziness that went down, I don't hate him. Um, there's a lot of stuff I'm working through. There's a lot of stuff that's still hard on me, but ultimately I can't I can't say I hate him or any of the spiteful, angry ex-girlfriend stuff because I've moved on and I've done great and I'm doing awesome and I wish him nothing but the best. But uh, clearly it didn't work with us. Uh, my advice to anybody going through this situation like I was going through is how important communication is in a relationship. You should always be able to talk to your significant other about everything. And I understand that privacy is a thing. You're not required to talk with them about everything, but you should feel comfortable with that person, especially if you're intending to spend any large span of time with them to tell them, Hey man, this sucks. And you should have enough respect for yourself to say you know, when something's bothering you, hey, this sucks. And if it doesn't change, I'm out. Because at the end of the day, everybody deserves to be happy and feel loved and experience life in the best of ways and not sit around moping over somebody who clearly doesn't care. So with that being said, I know at least one of uh, my theater friends watches our channel um, because he has called me by my stage name off of the channel. And uh, if you're watching this, 
that's exactly why he and I are not together anymore. And uh, that's exactly why I have kind of distanced myself from everybody who started to pull away when we broke up. Because I don't feel like I was treated properly. And I don't feel like I should have stayed any longer than I did, much less as long as I did. Uh, but with that being said, to everybody else out there and anybody out there and all of you out there, I I don't fucking know what I'm doing anymore. I am out of it tonight. But uh, I hope you guys have an awesome evening and stay out of trouble and don't do drugs and stay in school and eat your vegetables, and yeah, you guys have a nice night.